Um, hello, uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Yul Bahat. Um, not a lot you need to know about me. Uh, probably the most important thing you need to know about me is that unlike um, most or all of you, I am not a developer. I know, shame. Um, other things you need to know about me, I'm a geek, I'm a father, um, which means I'm teaching my daughter to choose the dark side, obviously. Um, I'm originally from Israel, um, and I'm mostly doing, I'm in security. I'm a cybersecurity guy. I've been doing cybersecurity um, for a long, long time now. And I have a company, Security Cyber Solutions, uh, promoting innovation in cybersecurity, meaning I help, my company helps organizations all over the world transition from doing cybersecurity the way we've been doing it in the 1980s and into the 21st century. Um, but that's not relevant for today. For today, I am also known as an AI critic. Uh, you know, they say that those who cannot do teach and those who cannot teach review. Uh, some people review restaurants. I like to review AI projects, meaning I like to point at AI projects and laugh. Um, it's not that I'm against AI uh, per se. Um, some of my best friends are um, killer robots from the future. Um, but the thing is, here's the reality. AI, the way we have it today, is not what we were promised by Hollywood, right? So in 1991, there was a movie, one of the best movies that ever came. I'm, of course, uh, referring to this movie. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's, uh, Tometeoro Vima Tupelargo, right? <laughs> uh, Excellent movie. I just saw it last week. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm talking about this one. Um, so 1991, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, right? James Cameron, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Linda Hamilton, excellent. And this movie predicted that in six years, meaning 1997, computers will become so smart that they will develop consciousness, or what we call in the industry, the singularity, and that a uh, very sophisticated computer network called Skynet will annihilate the human race. We are now in 2019. This movie is almost 30 years old. Skynet never happened. The human race was never extinct. Why? The answer, of course, is Sarah Connors is a badass. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is that we found out the hard way that AI is hard. AI is much, much harder to achieve than we ever expected. And it's not that we're not trying, right? It's not that there are no AI projects going around. There's actually a lot of them. We are trying to do AI and we are failing to do AI and we are failing miserably. And that's okay because failure is awesome. Failure is how we learn. Failure is how we become better. So, over the next 30 minutes or so, we're gonna review some of the biggest, most epic failures in AI projects today, or the last couple of years, and we can see what we can learn from them and what we actually learn from them. So, are we ready? By the way, anybody here did not see um, Terminator 2? Right? No? Excellent. Excellent. Good for you. Uh, okay, so, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Singapore, and I was in this hotel. And this hotel, a very nice hotel, had an egg station in the breakfast area. Now, usually, when we say egg station, we mean there's a person making an egg for the guests. Not in this hotel. This hotel had a machine. And, and maybe instead of me talking about it, I will just show you. So this is a video clip that I took with my phone. I sped up a bit. <laughs> I 
I swear to God, it made the perfect eggs. I am not kidding. Amazing. So I had the opportunity to talk with the kitchen manager of the hotel. And, and he was so proud of this machine, right? Like, this is his baby. And he, was, he kept going on and on and on about um, sensors and computer vision and artificial intelligence and all these things to make sure that the angles are just right and, and that the, the thing doesn't touch the eggs when it scrapes them. And it was amazing. And I was there. I was in this hotel for three weeks. Every morning, this machine made me perfect eggs without fail, except one time. <laughs> one morning, I woke up early. I woke up too early, in fact. Went to the breakfast area, and I saw that the people from the kitchen didn't have the chance to put the eggs in the eggs basket thingy. Now, I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm a security guy. I'm a hacker. I see something like this. I have to touch the button, right? I have to. I have to. So I did. <laughs> and I was very surprised to find out that it worked, right? I touched the button. The machine started working, doing its thing, made me the perfect invisible eggs <laughs> and I ever had. And, and this brings me to my first point of the day, and probably the most important point of the day, AI is not magic. AI is not some mystery. AI is software made by developers. And a software is just as good as its developers. Okay? I don't have to tell you guys and girls that you know good code, writing good code is not a science. It's an art. Um, we spent the whole day yesterday talking about soft skills, about uh, creativity and about problem solving and all that, this is not done by code. This is done by humans writing code, either good or bad. Software is not writing itself. The robots are not going to take your jobs anytime soon. But it is software. And unfortunately, it is very good, eh, sorry, it is very easy to write bad software. You put garbage in, you get garbage out. The number one rule of programming, I hope, is input validation. Okay? The people that made the egg machine never expected somebody like me to operate the machine when it's not ready, when there are no eggs. Luckily, the machine did what we call a fail open. Right? Nothing bad happened. Nothing good happened, but nothing bad happened. But this is pure luck. right? It was just as probable that I would have pushed the button and everything broke. Thank God that didn't happen. Um, so yeah, so input validation. Um, we're going to see that a lot in the course of, of this talk. Um, and I've mentioned, uh, I mentioned um, computer vision. And, and that's a thing. That's a thing when we talk, when, when I talk with people about artificial intelligence, that's probably the first thing that comes to their mind. Computer vision and, and image recognition and all that. One thing they fail to understand, they fail to think about, is that computer vision does not mean intelligence. There's nothing intelligent about it. It's something that we, it's a trick. Okay, we taught a machine to do something. So in facial recognition, we taught the machine how to identify patterns. This is pattern recognition, pure and simple. We taught the machine to identify the patterns of individual people. What can we do with it? So one thing we can do with it, for example, um, is security. So I have a Windows 10 machine here. I have an Android phone here. You probably have some iPhones in the crowd. And we can, do we can use facial recognition to unlock our devices as a security measure. I use it all the time. Turns out, you don't actually need me to unlock my devices, right? You just need my face. More than that, you just need a picture of my face. So Windows 10, Android, iPhone, can all, they all can be bypassed by taking the camera and putting a picture in front of it. It will just bypass. There's nothing intelligent 
about that facial recognition. There is no input validation. The, the makers of those systems forgot to check that it's actually a live person, or what we call a live test. By the way, it doesn't really have to be a good picture either. Like, not, you don't need a high resolution copy or whatever. Uh, in the first generation when iPhones came up with this feature, all you had to do was show the iPhone a picture from another iPhone. So, yeah, <laughs> intelligence. Um, but it works, mostly, right? So, you know, you can say it's not that big of a deal, it's not that big of a risk, it does what it needs to do, it keeps people from unlocking our devices, it keeps our spouses uh, away from the devices, it keeps our kids away from the devices, it keeps our pets <laughs> away from the devices, um, but it works. Um, what, what, what if you raise the stakes, right? What if you make it more important? How many of you here heard about a system called Nest, N-E-S-T? Okay, great, a bit. So Nest is an artificial intelligence-based home security system. It's supposed to keep the bad guys out. It's supposed to keep only authorized people that live inside the house or allowed by the house. The people who build Nest, they they learn, they, they, they learn from these mistakes, right? They said, okay, this is not good enough. We need to add a live test. So the people of Nest added live test, making sure that there's actually a human being standing in front of the camera, standing in front of the door. They even did other things, okay? So they, they made sure that this is not affected by lighting situations. So you know the, the thing with the Android and, and the thing, it only works inside, it doesn't work outside. They added features that takes into consideration um, background images, like trees and stuff like that, and ignores them, they forgot one thing. They forgot that the people who buy system like Nest are geeks. And what's the number one thing that geeks loves most? Geeky t-shirts. What happens when you go to your Nest, to your house, and try to get inside your house while wearing a Batman shirt. <laughs> the system identified that this is a live person, right? This is a live, breathing human person at the door. It's just Batman. <laughs> and Batman is not authorized to get in my house, <laughs> right? This person was locked outside of his own house. Luckily, the Nest system has a manual override. You can also put a pin code to get inside. But that basically means that this person just spent like $5,000 on a highly overcomplicated, overpriced keypad lock, $50 max. So, let's raise the stakes even a bit more, right? Computer vision. Where do we use computer vision? Who uses computer vision? Governments. Governments love computer visions. Um, the city of London, in well, the city of London in general, has one of the highest rates of surveillance cameras across the city. It's almost a 100% coverage. And in 2018, they decided to add um, artificial intelligence capabilities to this system. The idea was they also connected it to a database, database of wanted criminals. They wanted, so if any wanted criminal goes around the city, get caught by a camera, this will automatically raise an alert. So during the, I think, three months of the pilot, of the test phase, the system raised 104 alerts. Now when the system raised an alert, it supposedly has a 90% accuracy rate. So it's, the system is sure, 90% sure, that they are correct in identifying the person. 104 cases, how many cases they were actually correct? Six. They had a 98% fail rate. Or, you know, if you're optimistic, you want to look at the glass half full, a 2% success rate, yeah. Obviously, this system thrown away to the trash. They're, they are about to try again, unfortunately. Um, and 
I said earlier that sometimes we learn from our mistakes, but unfortunately, sometimes we don't learn from our mistakes. Because another place that tried to do something similar is China. China is another place where you have 100% coverage, or, well, in the big cities, in Shanghai and Beijing. <coughs> they had a different idea, though. What they tried to do is they tried to catch um, criminal activity in real time and, and identify criminals in real time. Uh, which was a nice idea, potentially, in theory. Now, this woman, um, probably you don't know who she is. Um, her name is uh, Dong Minju. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And in China, she's a very famous person. Very. Um, she's a multi-billionaire. Her face is all over the place. Uh, she's the president of one of the largest enterprises in China. Um, imagine her surprise where one day she gets a package in the mail, like a letter, an envelope. And in there, there's a letter saying that the security cameras of Beijing caught her jaywalking, crossing the street where she was not allowed to cross. This is, I'm reminding you, a multi-billionaire. Okay, the last time she walked anywhere was like 1991, right? <laughs> so obviously she's, she's upset, she's mad. And her people is, are mad, and they're calling whoever they need to call, and the mayor gets involved, and this is a big case. And they're investigating, they're investigating what happened. And the police comes back to them after a while, and they we have good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is that the system was not wrong. We actually, the camera actually caught this woman crossing the street uh, while there was a red light. Okay? The bad news is that it was because the system caught a bus with her face on it. <laughs> so, obviously, uh, this is China. People were executed for this. Don't. I'm not recommending. <laughs> um, so, maybe, maybe this is a lesson for us. Maybe we, we, we need to understand that um, real time, real life, image recognition, uh, visual, rec uh, um, computer vision, not really working as we should have, as we want it to be. What if we try it offline? Okay, this should be simpler. Like images, files, this is code, right? Ones and zeros, we should be able to handle that. And one of the groups, one of the companies that tried to do something with that is Google. And uh, Google has a service called Google Photos. Anybody using Google Photos? Yeah, pretty popular. Um, and they have this feature where, where Google Photos recognizes that you took pictures of the same place, so multiple pictures of the same place. They offer you to automatically create a panoramic shot, like to take these pictures and stitch them together. It works fairly well, I have to admit. I've used it a couple of times, but not always. So this person, uh, they took three pictures, right, of the same place. And Google did a pretty good job recognizing these, are, are the, these three pictures are of the same place, right? So the same snow, the same trees, the same mountains. Um, the thing that Google failed to recognize is that these things here are people <laughs> and not, for, let's say, mountains. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe, who knows. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really, that also sometimes fails spectacularly. I live for this, right? This is, this is what I live for. This is what I wake up in the morning for. Um, so maybe we should just forget about image recognition altogether. Computer vision doesn't work, or not yet anyway. Um, another part, another field where we use, heavily use AI, is in decision making. So completely different, right? Decision making. And, and we have this idea in our heads as humans that machines, algorithms, code, they are, you know, pure logic, okay, right? The, the, they are not affected by uh, emotions, they are not affected by uh, things that are not important. They should look at the facts and make 
cold, hard decisions. Problem with that theory is that it's completely wrong. So AI is amoral. So this is professionally speaking. AI is amoral. What is amoral? Amoral means it's lacking a moral sense, unconcerned with the rightness or wrongness of something. We do not teach AI what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. That's not something we do. Maybe that's something we should do, actually. And there's a talk right after lunch in the main stage uh, by Fiona. It's going to talk about some of these type of things. But right now, we don't. And but the fact of the matter is that algorithms, AI, they don't just know things, right? It's not, like I said, it's not magic, it's not mystery. We teach them, or in the professional language, we train them. And we train them using data that we already have, historical data and current data. And with that data, we give the AI our own biases, okay, our own human failures. So I'm going to go back for just a second to computer vision, just for one example. Um, so let's say I have an AI that I want to train in order to recognize human beings. How will I do that? I need to give it data. I need to give it to train it somehow. So what I will do, I will go to Google Images. I will type uh, um, like human or people. And I will feed the AI the results. Sounds good in theory. Problem is. If you actually try to do so, you can go and check for yourselves. If you actually do go to Google and type people and humans and stuff like that, 80%, at least 80% of the results are going to be white male. Okay, so this is the information that you train, this is the data that you train your AI with. So you take this, inf you take this AI and now you're sure you did the right thing. You're sure that this AI now knows how to identify people. And you take that algorithm and you put it inside a self-driving car. When you expect it, when it sees a human, it stops. And that's great if it sees a white male. If it sees a person of color, if it sees a woman, if it sees a child, well, you're shit out of luck and you're gonna get crashed. And that actually happened. So, but I said I'm going to go use computer vision for just a second. Let's look at the other side, decision making, right? Just pure decision making. There have been multiple cases where um, states try to use AI to help judges in, in criminal court. So, how do you train, how do you teach an AI to judge on cases? You don't teach it the law. It doesn't know what the law is. You don't teach it morality. You give it 200 years of legal cases, legal decisions made by human judges. And in essential, in essentially, you just taught it to make the same decisions as those human judges. So we look back at the, at, at the actual decisions this AI is making, and we're seeing that it's making the same decision, we're seeing that the AI, supposedly impartial, supposedly amoral, is sending black teens three times more to jail than white people. Okay, it has the same bias. We made AI racist. That's an achievement. Okay? That's a human achievement right there. And not only we made it racist, we made it sexist. So another case, a completely different case, um, com and a completely different company called Amazon. You heard of Amazon, right? So Amazon said, let's try to use AI in our hiring processes. How, who do we hire? Which CV do we accept? Um, again, with the idea that it's, they're going to pick the best candidate, right? Pure logic. But they did the same thing, the same mistake. They just fed it all the CVs of all the people that were hired by Amazon. So eventually, they looked at the data and they're seeing the AI is making exactly the same decisions as the human, human resources people. 
but Amazon went one step ahead. They really wanted to find out what went wrong, right? Like, what's the decision process that the AI is actually making? And they started to taking these CVs and they started redacting them. They started to take information out of them to see if this changes the decision processes. And eventually they took out so much information from the CV that they were left with only two data points, a name and a gender. So you have 5,000 CVs, only thing on them are name and a gender. And the AI consistently hired male employees two times more than female employees without any other data point to compare them. We gave the AI our own sexism, our own biases. And another place where we did that is with Google Translate. So Google Translate is an interesting case because it's, it's different. Google Translate is not based on training on historical data. The, the data for Google Translate comes from actual people. If you try to translate something and Google Translate doesn't know how to translate it, they ask you to put the translation yourself. And that's how we build these databases of translation. So what happens when you have a language like Hungarian, and Hungarian does not have gender like we have in English, okay? They don't have a different word for he and she. So what happens when you try to translate tra uh, sentences from Hungarian to English? You see, weird things. You see, she is a nurse. She is a baker. She is a wedding organizer. But he is a scientist. He is an engineer. He is a CEO. He is a doctor. This is not from the AI. The AI doesn't care about gender. It doesn't know good from right. This is from the people, from the community. And we, as the race of human beings, we are sexist. And that's what we taught the algorithm. That's what we taught the AI. And he's doing exactly what we, we asked him to do. One point in the favor of Google, they actually learn from their mistake. So when now you try to do that, you don't get these mistakes. Now you get both options. So Google can learn from their mistakes. Google can learn from their failures. And that's great. That's exactly what they're supposed to do. Now, we said that AI is amoral, right? But sometimes, sometimes AI is psychotic. And the definition of psychotic is a person suffering from chronic mental disorder with abnormal or violent social behavior. So, there was a research, a project research in a, in a university, and they created two AIs. One AI was trained with the whole data set of Google Images. Just really everything. Every image that human being ever produced. The other AI was called Norman. Norman was trained on highly, highly violent pictures. You know, crime scene shots, uh, very violent movies, this type of things. And then what they did, they gave both AIs the Rorschach test. So if you don't know that one, it's when you show usually a person a blob of ink and they're supposed to tell you what they see. And that's supposed to tell you something about their personality. So the general AI, the, the big AI, he said, this is a vase with flowers. Norman said, this is a man shot dead. This nice picture, the big AI said, a small bird. Very nice. Norman said, a man getting squashed by a machine. <laughs> and this picture is lovely with colors and everything. And the big AI says, a person with an umbrella. Norman said, a man getting shot dead in front of his screaming wife. Technically not a failure, you know, Norman did exactly what we told him to do. But this just comes to prove to you, AI is not magic. 
AI does exactly what we teach AI to do, what we train AI to do, garbage in, garbage out. The data you train the AI on is the data that the AI uses to make their decisions. But it's not all bad, right? We have some early successes in AI. Um, anybody can guess what's the most famous AI success I can think of? Go game, that's a great example. So Google, uh, the Google uh, winning the Go game, a very difficult game. But I was thinking more about Atlas. You know Atlas? Atlas is a very famous robot, uh, AI powered, and it can do cool stuff like parkour. It's very, very cool. And I have two problems with this video. This video went viral like a couple of years, a year ago. Problem number one, this is a promotional video, right? Published by the company. We don't know how many takes they had to make in order to get this one successful shot. We just don't know. And the second problem is that this is, this is the training environment. This is Atlas's training environment. This is its home base. Right? What happens if we take Atlas into the real world? Let's find out. So, 2018, just approximately the same time as this video, um, they brought Atlas to a conference, just like this. And we're not going to see the whole video, so the whole video is about 15 minutes long, uh, so I'm just going to show you the end. And again, the video itself is very impressive. Atlas is doing all the tricks. Uh, it's, Atlas is playing with this dog robot here also, which is also very cool and, and friendly. A and then at the end, the, the, uh, the operators tell Atlas to go away. So Atlas um, gets sad and, and tries to go away. So it goes. Atlas, unfortunately, doesn't know what curtains are. So I want to show you uh, one of the robots. So the <laughs> Input validation. Nobody taught Atlas to recognize curtains. Okay, okay, check it. Nobody taught Atlas to recognize curtains. It doesn't know what they are, so it just tried to go through them and failed spectacularly. So, what is AI actually good for? And we do have some successes in AI. Um, we already talked about pattern recognition. So pattern recognition is something that AI today is very, very good at, if we can, again, if we can call it AI. Um, one of the things that came out a couple of months ago, this is from NVIDIA. Uh, so we said pattern recognition, and from pattern recognition, we can also do extrapolation. Extrapolation, or in other words, prediction. Okay, if we take a big data set and we give it something, it can guess what we were trying to say or what we we're going to do next. So in this case, you can take like a very, very simple drawing and then the AI will create a visual based on that. Okay, completely autonomously. And it's very, very cool. It really is. I don't have anything bad to say about that. Um, but this is a gateway. This is a gateway for an entire industry of what we call today deep fake, creating images and videos that are not real. They do not exist in the real world. Um, one very cool project just came out a couple of weeks ago is taking static images, like photos, and the AI can then predict how they will look like if they were videos. So what happens if we take the Mona Lisa, very, very famous picture, and animate it? Okay, this is full AI. So again, this is prediction. It's not intelligence. It's just taking common information from a big, big, big data set and applying it to a certain situation. Um, we, are, we have the technology, the state of AI today is that we have the technology to create videos that can show anybody doing anything, saying anything. And it's not only video, it's also voice, so we can make them say whatever we want. Bear in mind, the video I'm going to show you next is 100% fake. It never ever happened. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, 
I don't know, uh, Killmonger was right, or uh, Ben Carson is in the sunken place, or how about this, simply, President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Now, Obama never said that. If you say otherwise, it's slandering. So, let's summarize all of this. AI, AI is great if you remember that AI is software, it's not magic, it's not mystery, and if you remember that it's not actually intelligent, okay? The word artificial intelligence is very, very misleading. There is no intelligence involved, it's just very, very sophisticated piece of software. I personally, this is completely my personal observation, my personal belief, we will not see the day where computers develop self-consciousness. I just don't think it's going to happen. I might be proven wrong, I might be dead when it happens. And when everybody around you, like these days it seems everybody, every company is doing something with AI because right now this is the hype cycle, right? We're at the top of the hype cycle, everybody is doing something with AI. Remember this survey. Two out of five of companies saying they're doing AI are not actually doing AI. And there's a very nice joke saying, if you're doing machine learning, you're writing it in Python. If you're doing artificial intelligence, you have a PowerPoint. And <laughs> in the words of one of the greatest philosophers of the 20th century, I will leave you with these words, hasta la vista, baby. Thank you very much.